Hello and welcome to the second episode of the editorial, TLDR's podcast, where we take you behind the scenes and talk about why we talk about things. Is that, <laughs> is that a good explanation? That was pithy. I like it. I hadn't it. thought of it beforehand. Yeah. I just struggle to explain what this is. I'm joined by Zach Michaelis, TLDR's editor-in-chief. Um, and as I alluded to with that pithy intro, uh, we're going to run through some of the videos that we've released over the last... 14 days when we're talking about the reaction to those videos, the controversy surrounding those videos, um, and kind of why we did what we did. Um, so before we get into the specific videos, some people last time were asking to hear a bit more about our decision-making process. And obviously this is called the editorial. So people are kind of interested in our editorial take. Um, so do you want to start by running us through how we choose topics and why the topics we end up making videos on are the ones we do? Sure. Well, I think the best way of sort of framing it is there are essentially two variables mm -hmm. which we take into consideration when we're deciding on a topic. Um, one is just sort of the import of the story, how, yeah. you know, quote unquote, important we think it is. Um, and the other is its commercial viability, it's, you know, essentially how well we think it's going to do on the channel. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, ideally, all the videos should score quite high on both those metrics. Um, yeah, the dream video is one that's clearly important mm -hmm. and also is of interest to the audience. And often there's a good correlation there. I mean, generally people are more interested in things that are, you know, quote unquote important. Um, there are exceptions, obviously. There are things that are important that just don't do particularly well on the channel. I mean, climate stuff is probably the like yeah. most obvious example of that. Um, maybe also certain American stories because mm -hmm. the, we struggled a bit more with TLDR US. Um, and equally, that there are there are topics that are commercially viable, mm -hmm. but perhaps not so important. You know, the, the Bill Gates COVID comes to mind, that sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, yeah, and they <laughs> not taking shots at anyone in particular yeah. there. Um, but yeah, those are essentially the two metrics uh, on which we evaluate potential topics. Um, and I think as I think as we've grown, we've we've had the sort of um, the fiscal space to weight import a bit more than yeah. we used to. We now have the, essentially the money um, to cover things that we think are important, even if we know um, they might not do so well. Um, yeah. And that's a lovely luxury. So let's run through some of the videos that we have made in the last 14 days. Um, ones that kind of fall between those two worlds of import and kind of viability from a yeah. business perspective. Um, so firstly, let's start with the video we did on the crisis in Kosovo, Serbia sure. and Kosovo. Um, why was it we ran with that video? The Kosovo story and essentially all of the Balkans content um, doesn't, doesn't do particularly well in commercial terms. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not really sure why that is. I just think that generally in, in the wider media, there is little interest in Balkan affairs. And that means that when we release a video on the Balkans, it's, there's, the audience just aren't primed for it. They're yeah. not ready for a Balkans video, so there's not much prior interest. Um, we, I think it's nonetheless important because, and I think this is again, this is not sufficiently recognized both um, amongst like the European public, but also in European media. Um, the Balkans is a really volatile region mm -hmm. and the collapse of Yugoslavia is, is actually quite recent history, um, mm -hmm. especially in the Balkans. I mean if you know someone who's Serbian or Albanian, um, that still plays a massive role in the political psyche in those yeah. countries. Um, and the the Kosovo story is interesting because obviously nothing directly came of it. I mean, it's nominally a, an argument over um, license plates and mm -hmm. whether or not sort of ethnic Serbs living in northern Kosovo should get Kosovo IDs. Yeah. Um, but it's plays into this wider Balkan trend of what you pre-existing ethnic um, disagreements reasserting themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and that's pretty worrying because, as I just mentioned, I think it's underappreciated how it's sort of intrinsically volatile that region is. Um, and what look superficially like quite technical and minor disputes can quickly spiral out um, into, into sort of broader inter-ethnic conflicts that are fueled by the memories of inter-ethnic violence mm -hmm. um, from the collapse of Yugoslavia. Yeah, so it'll be interesting, obviously it's interesting what happens in those countries, but as you say, it's important for Europe and beyond what happens there. And while it might not be the most headline-grabbing story at the moment, yeah. it's useful context to have 
for if something more major would happen in the future. I suppose. Yeah, I think the Bosnia story is a similar thing. Like the Bosnia story, it's Balkan, so it's, there's not much pre-existing interest in it, and also it's very technical. Yeah. Um, but like it is important, um, and, and the fact that there is a non-trivial chance of um, Bosnia Herzegovina, not I mean, success, secession is still unlikely. Obviously, yeah. it's worth saying, but it's a non-trivial chance of something like that happening. Uh, a non-trivial chance of a new country in Europe is is. It's pretty important. Yeah. Um, so we thought it was worth covering. Let's move to the poly crisis video we did, which was a series of kind of slightly interconnected crises uh, in Asia. What was the kind of thought process of that one? So the poly crisis one. Uh, you just like saying poly crisis. I love the one. word poly crisis. It's great. It's a great word, though, it isn't is it? It is good. Um, obviously, it feels nice to say, but it also yeah. just makes you sound smart. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but the uh, is that, where does that fit in the metric of importance? Oh, that's up there. A, that's, yeah, that's, my that's main the third thing. point yeah. of this triangle. <laughs> if I can sound smart to future employers, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, <laughs> anyone out there? Um, yeah, that's key. Um, but the the poly crisis video I thought was a very good way of touching on a whole load of important topics quite quickly and efficiently. Mm. Um, obviously, there are various independent crises going on in South Asia. I mean, yeah. you have Pakistan, you have Sri Lanka. To some extent, you have Bangladesh, although I think it's important not to overstate how serious that crisis is. I mean, the fact that they're going for an IMF loan doesn't necessarily mean they're close to um, sovereign default. Um, but you have a whole load of, of independent financial crises. And that video gave me the opportunity to talk about all of those independent crises quite quickly, mm -hmm. um, give you a quick update on all of them because we've covered Pakistan and Sri Lanka in the past, and also talk about the, um, the prospect of a wider sovereign debt crisis in the global emerging markets. Yeah. Um, we got some pushback on that video, uh, largely because of the conclusion of that video, which was to do with the sort of emerging market debt crisis and whether or not the IMF is sort of fit for purpose. Mm -hmm. And, co and able to cope with um, a sort of a full-on emerging market debt crisis. I think the criticism actually fair enough. I mean, the, the problem was is that uh, that video ended up getting quite long, yeah. which meant that, again, this comes back to the health about commercial viability. If we wanted to avoid spending too many hours on it, too many costly hours on it, we had to keep that conclusion quite short, mm -hmm. which meant that I, we didn't really have the space um, to do an in-depth discussion of, you know, basically yeah. whether or not the IMF is fit for purpose. And also, historically, emerging debt crises were relatively manageable because those countries borrowed exclusively off a sort of very select group of creditors. Mm -hmm. So they borrowed off sort of France, the US, the UK, um, and all these big countries were in a little club called the Paris Club, where when an emerging you know, market economy came and said, oh, listen, guys, we can't pay. Yeah. They all got together and be like, okay, we'll restructure our debt like this. We'll, you know, we'll make sure it's all fair. Today, uh, the sovereign debt landscape is a lot more complicated. Mm -hmm. um, and countries like Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka is a good case in point, they borrow off, obviously, still, you know, the US and the UK and France uh, and all those big bilateral lenders, but they also borrow heavily from non-Paris club states like China is the, is the big example, and also a whole load of private companies and yeah. sort of on, on the international markets, which means that when they default on their debt, restructuring that debt is really quite difficult. So basically, what I want to say about that video is that I think the criticism was justified we were just too quick in our conclusions that I think we basically said the IMF is going to struggle to deal with places like Pakistan and Sri Lanka because IMF loans are politically toxic. And I think the language, the precise language you used was that maybe the IMF should try, quote, less punishing conditions. Mm -hmm. um, I think we basically just didn't go into enough detail about what IMF reform would actually look like, which is sort of fair enough, it would take a really, really long time. Yeah. Um, and we didn't really touch on the other um, aspects of the, the potential emerging market debt crisis that might make restructuring more difficult. But essentially that comes back down to the, that comes down back to the commercial viability thing, which is just that um, we can't, we just can't do videos that are that long. It yeah. doesn't really make financial sense past a certain point. And I think obviously, especially for that video, we were covering three crises in three separate countries. And then we kind of had two conclusions. One was on how kind of Poly crisis and connected crises yeah. are an issue. When you have an area that falls into crisis, then it has like knock-on effects with neighboring states. And then you also had the conclusion about the IMF. So you kind of, there were five things you were trying to do yeah. there. And when each of those can't really have more than two, three minutes, 
you're gonna have some sections squashed, which is kind of what I think happened with the IMF. And I think if it had been a video just on one of those states, yeah. we likely would have gone deeper, partly because we'd have had to, to make the video sufficient, sufficient length. And also just we naturally would have got there, whereas as you say, things get cut down. I think that happens quite a lot with our videos that they end up running long. And then there's always two, 300 words that end up being shaved off from somewhere at some point normally. Yeah. And often, I'd say sometimes too often, that ends up being cut from the end. And our videos sometimes have a tendency of just kind of stopping. And I sometimes when I'm narrating them, I kind of either ad lib things or I ask for extra stuff because otherwise you get at the end of the video. And I think as a viewer, you're kind of like, so what? Where did that You've happen? told me a yeah. lot of stuff and then now I'm watching a brilliant ad. <laughs> How did that happen? Um, so yeah, I think we need to get better at that because obviously the, the easy part to cut is the conclusion because all of the build up you kind of need and then you end up with not enough. You're not delivering hard enough on the premise, which is, I think is something I've encouraged the writers to work on and I think we broadly are. But I think this is a particular case just yeah. because there's so much content when you're covering three crises and then coming to two separate conclusions. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And I think if you're if you're watching this again, the, the ten people that are watching this, yeah, um, so furious. Yeah, <laughs> uh, if you're watching this, you might be asking like, why don't we just commit a couple more hours and do yeah. that? But the the fr the way that we sort of schedule workload relative to a video is essentially normally an animator animates one video per day mm -hmm. and the second you make a script 30 40 50 percent longer than usual all of a sudden that that is necessarily two days yeah. because we have a sort of a, a daily upload slot in the morning yeah. um, which is when we prefer to upload videos so um that is sort of the the limiting factor and why we can't yeah. make we can't just sort of like ad hoc make videos longer to include the necessary context and obviously you can sometimes there's yeah. occasions when we do there's occasions when we start animating later into a day because something huge happens and occasionally you can ask an animator to say can you do an extra couple of hours today we'll make it up at some other point yeah. do a bit of overtime um, and our team are really good at doing that generally when necessary but if it's regular and for kind of, and not no reason, because like that's an important video too, but it doesn't feel as urgent as yeah. Boris Johnson's resigned. Okay, I've got to do an extra two hours. That makes sense. Poly crisis is a bit like, why am I here till eight? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. And then as you say, it's kind of the eight to 10 minutes is kind of where we're aiming. Yeah. And that's viable for one animator one day. And also just chugs things up down for the rest of the week you know yes. it confuses the yeah. pipeline essentially yeah because yeah. if you can neatly say every morning an animator will need a script yeah. presuming they're animating that day every day they'll need a script and then they'll be done by the end of the day uploaded the next morning and yeah as you say even that extra bit and we've had this we had this this week kind of a little bit because uh it's been a bit chaotic thomas's iraq iran. video iran video sorry um swung over and it throws off the whole week from a from our perspective of trying to manage the videos, it gets a lot harder. And I think, I mean, another shout out, I think I said this last time, but we are employing another animator. I think if you're watching this on Friday, you've got three days. I think it closes Monday 12th. Is Monday the 12th? No, Friday the 12th. Monday 15th? I don't know, it's on the website, tldr.com forward slash team, yeah. I think. There'll be a link in the description. Anyway, this is taking too long. Basically, we are employing a new animator that could be you if you're quick enough. Um, and once we have that, we should have a bit more capacity to flex around and sure, animators will spend a day on it, but it might be one and a half animators rather than just one or whatever. So I think we are granting ourselves more flexibility going forward, but it's always gonna lean towards a fairly fixed time frame, which is difficult for some topics. The one other video I want to touch on, on like from the perspective of why we chose videos is the Peru video, sure. which, is the worst performing video from the last 14 days, I believe. Yeah, it's gotta definitely. be. It's yeah, one of the yeah. worst performing videos we've done in the last 14 <laughs> months. Definitely on global. Yes. Yeah. So do you wanna talk a bit about that, why we did it and also kind of the results of it? It's an interesting one, isn't it? Because I think we knew going into it that it wasn't gonna do particularly well. I mm -hmm. mean, um, you, you always struggle to find traction for videos that are about niche countries. Not mm -hmm. no disrespect to Peru, obviously, but <laughs> you know, compared to China, yeah. um, Peru is a bit of a niche country. Um, and historically, Latin American stuff hasn't done brilliantly either. No. Um, I think there's two things to say here. One, we thought it was important because, well, yeah, important is maybe a grandiose term, but we thought it was interesting at least because the political chaos that has beset Peru has now lasted for basically um, Castillo's whole yeah. term, so a good sort of 18 months. 
Is that how long he's been in power? Oh, yeah, gosh. and even before that, through to like 2018, they went through about three pres presidents before Castillo, so... Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, and in that respect, you know, whenever a political crisis lasts that long, mm. it is of import. The other thing is that I, it has been a particularly slow news week. Was that last week that we released Peru? It was last week, but it's, well, I it's think been a slow period. I remember the discussion at the time and realising there wasn't much else pressing. I there mean, wasn't that, anything better. Yeah. No, exactly. And that obviously always factors into our sort of editorial processes, what's available in the mm -hmm. news cycle that, that week. Um, and I think we just realized that we were already had a whole load of what we might we call them evergreen videos, which are essentially videos that just aren't time sensitive. Mm -hmm. And we had a whole load of those lined up, but we had nothing timely. And um, Castillo had just fired yet another prime minister. Yeah. And we thought, you know what, something timely, we'll, Give it go, a try. we'll go for that. But I think it was, it was one of those, wasn't it, where we thought it was relatively important. We thought it was something that had been sort of not sufficiently mm -hmm. covered by the media more generally. Um, but we knew in advance that it wasn't wasn't going to do particularly well. So I guess that falls into the category of those videos that we feel are quote unquote important, yeah. but not particularly commercially viable. And also, correct me if I'm wrong, I think that video was written by Nelson and Rory. Yeah, it was written Which yeah. is kind of an, that was also probably part of the appeal, is that's a kind of unusual combination. Rory is our social media coordinator. Yeah. So he writes, obviously, all the social media posts. He also helps contribute to the daily briefing, but he doesn't regularly write full videos. And he's done a couple in the past. No. So I think it was also an interesting dynamic of throwing someone else, because he'd written a bunch of social stuff around it. He'd researched yeah. it for the socials. So I think it was a, an interesting combination of people, a topic we kind of thought was interesting. And I think to be fair to the video, I mean, it got, I don't know, 60, 70,000 views, I yeah. think, which is obviously bad. Like we, by... we often joke about, I often call these videos uh, credibility building videos. Yeah. And I do think it does genuinely build our credibility. Sure. I think doing a sort of in-depth explainer on Peru and Peru's political crisis yeah. is something that other media outlets don't really do. And I think that well, I hope at least that the people watching TLDR Global will think, oh, well, these guys sort of know what they're talking about. And I also think for Global especially, there's a real temptation to just cover the big countries. Yeah. Like if you were trying to absolutely maximize from a monetization perspective, it would basically turn into TLDR China because that is the biggest. It would also turn into exclusively bad news about China. Yeah, bad yeah. news about China and economic videos yeah. would be it. Bad China economy videos. Yes, that would, would exactly. Be, yeah. But, but as you say, we're not interested in just doing that. I mean, those videos are we good. Do quite we do, do quite videos. a lot of them. But oh, it's, it's the balance, as you it say. It is the balance, yeah. But sometimes you want to swing back the other way. And Peru has offset. It's like carbon offsetting. Mm. We can do three China economy videos now because we did one Peru. But no, genuinely, I think it is, as you say. <laughs> I'm, let's go back to being serious for a second. But no, you're right. I think it does build credibility. It shows that we have a level of engagement globally. I think. It's important for new subscribers too, when they click on the channel, I think it's more impactful to see, oh, it's actually genuinely is a vast array of different countries that are being covered here. Yeah. Um, and also I think it is kind of cool that while it only got 60 or 70,000 views or whatever it got, I think it is still cool that we've got an audience of people that big who will yeah. click on a video about a country they probably never read about in the news, about a crisis they probably weren't really aware of, that all of them are English language speaking, the vast majority are in Europe and North America. So those are people who have no real connection to the story. It's not like even Russia, Ukraine content. Sure, day to day, I mean, we're being impacted by kind of sanctions and like cost of living stuff. Yeah. But even that has impacts on our lives. If the war expands, that makes a difference. This is a topic that really doesn't make any difference to anyone's lives globally. Yeah, the, sure. The Peru story. So it's cool that we've got an audience of people that are interested in politics in an abstract enough sense that they're interested in what's this political controversy? I'm interested in politics, so therefore I, I will be interested in this. And I think that's kind of. Yeah. That's a fun audience to have. So I think it's yeah, and I also good think we have that group. It demonstrates the interplay, doesn't it, between um, our sort of educa educational capacity mm -hmm. um, and the commercial viability of the channel. Like we would never have sort of garnered that baseline audience had we not put out, I mean, this is in some, some sense excusing the China economy videos, but had we not, yeah. you know, increased our sub count by plugging out those bad China economy videos. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That, bad? No, I mean China economy bad videos. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. you put the so, words in the wrong Yeah, part. yeah, the adjectives are all over the place there. But, you know, I think obviously the Peru video is a particular example, but I think a better example almost would be something like the Ethiopia one, like, um, or, or the Afghanistan videos that we do, where we, just by virtue of the fact that we have a reasonably large 
sort of baseline audience, yeah. we can bring a degree of attention. I mean, obviously not that much, we're not like a massive news channel, but we can bring a degree of attention yeah. to genuine humanitarian issues that really are important, you know, whether there's famine in Afghanistan mm -hmm. or a civil war in Ethiopia, which doesn't get the coverage it probably deserves. Yeah, on that point, I was just looking on my phone to see how many new subscribers the Peru video brought in, 72. There you go. So that kind of proves the point that it's not building our audience. <laughs> It's serving the audience we already have and hopefully they're interested. Yeah. And I would encourage people, I mean, obviously I would encourage people to watch our videos, but I think <laughs> if, the, if you do see those videos, it's not a topic you knew about already. It's not one you've been primed for, as Zach was saying. I would still encourage you to maybe check out the ones that still seem interesting. If it's like that video, I think it, that video, I think is more interesting than people gave it credit for. The fact they've been through eight leaders in four years if that was any like major Western nation, oh, yeah. that would be the only new story anyone was talking about. I would encourage people to check out those videos sometimes, just because I think, as you say, it is a genuinely quite interesting educational one. And also there is a certain amount you can learn from other countries that applies across nations. And I think it is, I think we would appreciate your support on those ones. And also I think they're genuinely useful and educational. So push the boat out there, challenge yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Try harder. I obviously agree. It gives me more <laughs> license to do genuine videos. Well, that is true. Those are the ones I want to talk about from the perspective of why we chose them. Yeah. Are there any controversies we need to address? Obviously, you've touched on the IMF issue. Are there any others? I feel like it's been a relatively uncontroversial week. Yeah, I weeks. think you're right. I think it has been an uncontroversial couple of weeks. We've done, we've had fewer small errors than usual. Mm -hmm. um, we should say in the interest of complete transparency, that isn't because we've implemented um, the process that we said we were going yeah. to last week. We haven't quite got around to that all up two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, but I think essentially the, the fact that we're not doing live streams at the same time has that just helps. meant yeah. that we have a bit more um, time to you know, take care of our videos. Mm -hmm. um, the only other thing that I think is probably worth mentioning is the fact that we haven't really done very much US content in the last this, two weeks. This year, even. This year. Honest, yeah. I think it's particularly relevant in the last two weeks because it has been, yes. it's been, been a non-stop news. US news. Um, and I suppose, uh, again, this, this comes back to the thing we were talking about at the start of this episode, which is just that we have struggled to make the US channel commercially viable. Um, and that is not for lack of trying. And, and our US writers are actually just brilliant. I mean, they are some mm -hmm. of the best, the best like sort of um, volunteer, or not even volunteer anymore, but some of the best writers we've hired. I don't really know why it is. I don't know if there's less of an appetite for sort of non-partisan US news. I think it's probably also partly that the American media landscape is that much more saturated than say the European or the British. Mm -hmm. That's that's essentially what's gone on there. We would have obviously loved to do videos on the Inflation Reduction Act and uh, essentially its implications for the climate. Um, and we equally think that it's very important, well, the, the fact that Trump's Mar-a-Lago house mm -hmm. was raided is important, not just in so far as it's like a fun story, but also sort of constitutionally important yeah. that a president is under investigation in that manner. And these are the topics that we're discussing in the office too. Yeah, of course. Like these are the topics we're interested in. If the US channel was the UK channel, we would have covered all of those things. Yeah, definitely. We'd have done multiple videos on them probably. We've probably done a fun video on the Alex Jones trial because that's just another interesting yeah. big story. Like that's not a serious option, no, but, but still, we'd have done yeah, it. Yeah. But the problem is the audience just isn't there in the same way. And we have been trying less so in recent weeks because of other commitments when it comes to live streams, when it comes to the new channel that's launching in just over a week's time. There's quite a lot of stuff. It's a very subtle little tease there. Well tease. Done. Link in the description. <laughs> wrong camera. Wrong, I looked at the wrong camera. Link in the description. But yeah, no, we had enough. There's enough other commitments that mean we don't have the capacity to throw the videos out. Yeah. I mean, and that's kind of been the attitude for a while, unfortunately, with US, is it's more been, we've got a gap, let's throw the US channel a bone, which isn't the right way to be thinking about it. But it just, it, because it's all of those videos, with some exceptions, lose money. When you're playing at the numbers the US channel is, and when you're still employing a writer to write them, you're employing an animator to edit for a whole day, those videos just aren't making their money back. No. So it's never a priority. It's always a, if another channel can't make something better performing, we'll put something on US. We're obviously going into midterms. So I think the news is gonna hot up. Today's video is two of 10 too. I don't know if you've seen that yet. No, I but haven't been checking that. A better performing one. So we'll have <laughs> to see how midterms content does. Um, and also once we've got the extra animator, we're trying not to make more content. We're trying to make 
employ someone to make the rest of our content better but potentially we'll have one extra video a week or whatever that we can chuck over so i think we're, we're obviously keen to keep trying um with us at least in the medium term but we obviously have to wait and see what happens with midterms does that because if it doesn't bounce back with midterms and that's like the biggest story until the next election then the question is what do we do for the next i mean i know no, the I us know. election never stops so i guess in three weeks time trump will announce he's running and then whatever but the us channel is a difficult one priorities wise i'm yeah. trying to work out how that fits into everything else yeah no i only i only mention it as a sort of like de facto apology to the audience because I think a lot of stuff happened in America in mm -hmm. the last couple of weeks that is, would otherwise be classic TLDR content. You know, mm -hmm. the, the, I don't know, the, the Trump FBI stuff is legally complicated yeah. and, and would require explaining and TLDR, you know, that's what we're sort of for. Yeah. And it's the same thing with the climate, redu well, the Inflation Reduction Act and its implications for the climate. Like, that's super important. And it's the sort of thing that we would normally love to do and explain. Yeah. Oh, sorry, look at the camera. And it's the sort of thing we would normally love to do. Um, yeah. Uh, like a sort of explainer type video on uh, they're just we just can't make it commercially viable and if that was a UK video Ben would have been all over that he'd have been yeah. reading through the pages he'd have printed out the document he'd be highlighting <laughs> stuff like the problem is yeah the audience just isn't necessarily there and I think it's almost as frustrating or presuming the audience find it frustrating I would say it's as frustrating for us as it is them oh yeah because these are really easy videos that if it were if the channel were more successful you could get out relatively easily they're kind of fun to cover they're fairly easy to cover because you're not diving into six years of political controversy in Peru or going back decades to explore why there's kind of like differences in Tigray and Ethiopia but like those are much harder diff videos to write than some of these other things and we would like to be able to do them but the problem is it just doesn't make any sense to do them yeah it's tough so another one while people are challenging themselves and watching videos really <laughs> really taking on the kind of immense challenge if all 10 of you could watch more us content that would help that would be much that would be useful i mean yeah. you might have to watch them a few times each yeah there's only 10 people put them on replay go do something else yeah good i don't, I don't know if we can encourage that i think we get against <laughs> youtube's terms of service also sort of straying away from the original premise of this podcast at this point We're just begging just people just to watch videos, videos <laughs> yeah <laughs> um okay i think those are the video i mean as you say not a whole lot of controversy i would encourage people if you've got questions that you want answering if you've got videos that you have issues with you can always comment on the youtube video this video is also going up on nebula and going up as a podcast um so if you're not watching this on youtube sorry go to the youtube video and comment there or you can email us hello at tldrnews.co.uk with the subject line um the what's the show called editorial editorial how did i forget that uh with the subject line the editorial i don't think that's getting edited out either <laughs> i think that's like staying in oh yeah if you if you email us questions then we can, or issues we can try and address those um each time i would say as well i know i subtly plugged it a moment ago but we do have a new channel launching on the 22nd of august which i'm excited for I think also talking very vaguely, and by the way, that channel is linked in the description, so you can subscribe now, and then when the announcement video comes out, you'll be the first to know what it is. Such a natural salesman. Anyway, um, I think what's fun about that channel too is, without spoiling anything, it's a little bit less bound to the normal news cycle in the same way the other videos really are. And I think it would be, maybe this is kind of the time we ought to start thinking about other things we can be covering that aren't i mean i know you've got a series idea that you'd like to do but there's we're thinking of series and stuff we can do that when there are quiet weeks like this we can fall into other things um but i think the new channel is potentially a little bit less driven by the news cycle it still obviously is it's still our world it's still a tldr channel but i think we have a bit more flexibility there and i think that is exciting and kind of different so next time we're here we'll be reacting to the very controversial launch of our new channel and it will already be shut down and will be cancelled um so i can't wait for that we'll be back in two weeks time you're going on holiday no, so i am going on holiday yeah that'll be fun yeah I'll tough life yeah cope without you yeah. um but yeah i have anything else to say no, that was a pretty smooth outro. Yeah, no, it was not. Now I've done this. <laughs> We're really good at ending stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, thanks for watching. We'll see you in two weeks' time. Be sure to watch all of our videos, especially yeah, please. especially that's, that's US key. and global. Um, and be sure to subscribe to the new channel so you can find out what's going on. <laughs> yeah.
Goodbye.